Today on Studio 13 Live. You black out, who you want me to call? An ambulance? Sally Field, one of the stars of 80 for Brady, stops by to chat about the new movie, and we get the scoop on if she would date Tom Brady. I'm so excited to learn this. I try my hand at aerial yoga. We'll show you how you can try this yourself. Then, we're celebrating Lunar New Year with the Mach 5 dance troupe as they stop in for a performance. And Spice Walla is here, cooking up some authentic Indian dishes. Studio 13 Live starts right now. I want to see you smile, take you another mile. Don't got to wait, don't got to wait, don't got to wait today. Like sun shining through the clouds, I'm going to make we're just singing along over here. Welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm Maria Garcia. Hey, I'm Carly Henderson. And we want to start out with a shout out to Lisa McGillivray, who watches us every single day. And remember, you can send us a message on social media at Studio 13 on Fox. Hey, Lisa. Lots What's of up, love. What's Lisa? <laughs> Thanks for hanging with yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. So today is National Hot Sauce Day. And Carly and I chatting found out we love the same hot sauce. Yeah, we both have the same favorite hot sauce. Yeah. Cholula. One? Yeah, uh -oh. I was going to say, one, two, three, six. That would have been cute. That would have been cute. Cholula. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I usually, I stay away from this, the super spicy foods, mm -hmm. but Cholula is the first hot sauce that I could really embrace for my palate at this point <laughs> in time. And I like sriracha, too. Yeah, sriracha is That's also good. good. I love our highbrow hot sauce talk. Yeah. You know what I'm really feeling today, though? What? Your cute dress. Oh, thank you so much. I love it. It's so colorful. We've got, like, totally different vibes today. I went dark and moody with the biggest sleeves These? you've ever seen. Look at this. Are Look at on this. another level. I know. I have gotten stuck on two door handles <laughs> in the Fox newsroom, and it's been very dramatic, but we're here. Did anybody see you do it? No, okay. no, but I'm being honest about it. Although I did get a few <laughs> messages from folks. Thank you for those of you who said you liked my dress. If you don't like it, you know, you can keep that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are talking about the Oscar nominations that are coming out tomorrow. But first, the Razzie nods are out right now. The Golden Raspberry Awards, or the Razzies, are honoring the worst of cinema. So the Marilyn Monroe Netflix movie, Blonde, leading the way with eight nominations, including Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay. Then there's Jared Leto's Morbius. That was the close behind at five nods, including worst actor. Sorry, Jared. But uh, there's one that might shock fans. We're talking about Tom Hanks. So the Oscar winner actually picking up three nominations alone, including worst actor for his role as Geppetto <coughs> in Pinocchio and worst supporting actor for his role as Colonel in Elvis. Now, the winners of the worst will be announced the night before the Oscars. And I never know how I feel about the Razzies. I think that most people take it in good fun, but, yeah, you know. I think so, too. Shading, like, America's precious gem of a man, Tom Hanks? Come on. <laughs> Poor guy. I mean, I guess he's gotten enough love in his lifetime, but, you know. It'll be okay. But this reminded me I need to watch Blonde, because that was on yeah. my list for a long time, and I never got around to it, or I didn't see it on Netflix when it was on, so I need to check that one out. And, Add it to my list, or maybe don't <laughs> add it to my list. I don't know. I think I'll go for it. Um, let's talk about another film. So a filmmaker known for his innovation and movies with very big budgets just hit a major landmark. So box office sales of Avatar The Way of Water totaled more than $2 billion yesterday. And that was enough to push director James Cameron into an elite category. Now Cameron is the only director to ever have three films top two billion dollars in sales. The others are his original Avatar and Titanic. A third Avatar film is scheduled for release for release late next year. I, I feel like this. Yeah, I like it too. Titanic's definitely my favorite. Okay, I that movie made me cry so hard, but I was very big into Leonardo DiCaprio in those years. So oh, me too. of course I loved it. You know, we all wanted to to be a part of that movie and, and I watched it once and I think I've shared the story with you guys before, but I bought the VHS or yeah. I asked my parents to and then never watched it again. It's yeah. too sad. <laughs> it's too sad. It's a good one. Aww. <laughs> All right, two major acts just announced shows at Climate Pledge Arena. Legendary singer and songwriter Stevie Nicks, of course. She's going to be kicking off her tour at Climate Pledge and Coldplay bringing their record-breaking Music of the Spheres World Tour here on September 20th. Now, that tour has sold more than 6 million tickets across Europe, North America, Latin Latin America and the tickets for Stevie and Coldplay, they go on sale on 
Friday. And I have just been loving the uh, the vibe of all like the music acts that we get here in mm -hmm. Seattle. I'm so excited to kind of get in the mix with that, mm -hmm. with all the um, different concerts this summer, love an outdoor concert, which is why this next story is very exciting. So Eric Church is actually adding a second show at the Gorge because of overwhelming demand. He's now going to perform on September 9th and September 10th. Jelly Roll and Haley Witters will open for him and tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. So lots of big, you know, music news for us. I love that we get to make, I know it's like a little gloomy and cold outside mm -hmm. sometimes. It'll be a little sunny today, but I love that we get to plan for the summertime. Yeah. You know, I think that's something to be excited it's about. It's nicer kind of the the listings and the books and bookings are kind of rolling in slowly too, because with everyone, you just start dreaming and planning and I don't know, getting hyped <laughs> for it. Well, a concert we were not invited to this last weekend, Beyonce, <laughs> and she's getting a hefty, check for a concert that she held over the weekend in Dubai. It marked her very first concert since the release of her latest album Renaissance last July. According to TMZ, Beyonce was reportedly paid $24 million for a performance Ooh. at a luxury hotel on Saturday. The show was private and she only had to perform for one hour. Must be nice, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can you imagine? And then everyone who attended too, they weren't allowed to have phones or anything like mm -hmm. that in there. They weren't allowed to post about it. Some people snuck the, the videos. I I'm sure you that. saw them on TikTok and across the interwebs all over Twitter. So it was cool to kind of get a glimpse of it. I, I hope they're like filming the concert for something or we'll get to see it because it looked like it was on another level. This could have been like a Beyonce concert special. It looked really, really cool. Yeah, I'm hoping to see something else from her. She usually shoots her little docu-series, which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Possibly. All right. Well, a Rhode Island girl taking the initiative to get to the bottom of a mystery. We love a girl who is going to figure it out. <laughs> She's enlisting the help of her local police department to crack this case. She actually wrote a letter to the Cumberland Police Department saying that, quote, I took a sample of a cookie and carrot that I left for Santa and the reindeer on Christmas Eve and was wondering if you can take a sample of the DNA and see if Santa is Aww. real. Oh, my goodness. Well, police got right on it, sending their items to the uh, forensics lab for a full workup. The department posted this all on Facebook and praised the young lady for uh, calling her a future detective <laughs> and the mission to find out who ate the cookies. Oh, my goodness. And I love that she's just like, I'm going to figure out this mystery. Oh, yeah. She's a real Harriet the Spy. Yes. Of this generation. <laughs> this generation. So cute. So fun. friendship is that we face the unknown together all right Let's coming up around. we are chatting with sally field about her role in the new movie 80 for brady and we get the scoop on what it's like to work with tom yeah but first we're going to check out what our buddy scott has for us today what's going on scott how's it going ladies was your new year's resolution to find a better job join community transit and be a part of a team that believes in making a difference in our community Community Transit is based in Snohomish County, and they're now hiring full-time and part-time bus drivers. Professional driving experience is not required. Their 10-week paid training program will help you get your commercial driver's license and get you driving a bus with confidence. You can earn over $32 an hour and enjoy generous benefits, including 34 days of paid time off in your first year. Medical, dental, retirement pension, and so much more. Plus, they're offering a $5,000 signing on bonus to new drivers. Apply today and get on the road to a rewarding new career. Visit communitytransit.org slash fox13 to learn more. Now, back to the show. Game's about to start. There's Tom. Oh, oh what a beautiful man. I like Gronkowski. We know, Chris. We've all read your Gronk erotica. It's not erotica. It's fan fiction. Very sexy fan fiction. Aren't you tired of the same old boring lives? Let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is no place for four old women. This could be Tom's last one. He's almost 40. That's like 80 in people years. Yeah, we're 80 in people years. I just really need this trip. 
That is 80 for Brady, featuring Jane Fonda, Sally Field, Rita Moreno, Lily Tomlin, along with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. The Gronk! <laughs> the movie is about four women over 80 who love Tom Brady and take a trip to see him in the 2017 Super Bowl, all based on a true story, and we actually got a chance to sit down with Sally Field to chat about the movie. We are here with Sally Field. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're so glad you're here chatting with us. Okay, we have to ask you about this because Rob Gronkowski told Tom Brady during an interview he saw a little spark between you and Tom, and he thinks you should date. And Tom seemed into it. What do you say about that? Honestly, I'm 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 thinking he, that that's very flattering. I'm sure he was kidding. I, I know he was kidding. Uh, I, I, I have nothing to say, except <laughs> We'll take that as a yes. <laughs> I, look, I, I feel like I could, you know, make him a peanut butter sandwich and a hard-boiled leg, put a paper bag, and send him off to school. I could do that really well. <laughs> you are a joy and a beauty yourself, but, you know, your co-star, Jane Fonda, did say that her knees gave out when she met Tom Brady for the first time. What was your reaction? Jane's knees always give out, let me tell you right. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I stood out there. We were in a little caravan with all of the campers kind of parked in a circle like like a um, you know, a, a, the wagon trains. Um, and I stood out there. I knew they were coming, all four of them. And um, I stood out there and welcomed them <laughs> because I thought they'd be nervous. They were coming on our field. Uh, this is where we live, and uh, I I wanted to welcome them. I, I would hope they do the same thing for me when I go out there and play football. Nice. <laughs> um, I want to talk. Oh, keep going. So that was all. I just asked them they wanted a cup of coffee and welcomed them in. And That's awesome. That I want to talk about you and your co-stars because you are all so talented, and you all really kind of rose to fame around the same time. Have you always been friends? Kind of talk about what it was like interacting with them leading up to this film. Jane and I have been friends, I think, um, the longest uh, since the um, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, and she's been hugely important in my life, uh, so important. Um, and I've known Lily almost that long. Uh, and she, too, she and I, you know, were, were, I was trying to learn how to be an activist. I was tailing along behind her and holding onto her coattails. Um, so I've known Lily a, a long time. And, and I think um, I was just meeting Rita for the first time, whereas the others had, had worked with her a little bit here and there. Uh, but we, we all just came together as if we were this group instantly. And, and that part was so much fun. And this movie was inspired by a true story. We know that a few of the ladies have passed on, but did you get to meet any of the women? And are you, are they still 80 for Brady? <laughs> Well, I think they're in their 90s now, um, uh, and there's two of them still um, up and functioning, and two of them, I think, are in assisted living, and one of them has passed. There were five originally, and I, I, I was heard, hearing a rumor that maybe the two um, that are capable of it would come to the premiere, and that would be lovely. I, we did not meet them. They're in Boston. Uh, we've seen some videotape on them, and we've sent them messages from us, but we haven't met yet. Well, the movie is such a joy. Sally Field, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with Studio 13 Live. Thank you. Coming up, we are celebrating Lunar New Year with the Makfi Lion Dance Troupe. And come along with me as I learn to do aerial yoga. Oh, yeah, we will be right back. Lunar New Year celebrations began this weekend, and 2023 is the year of the rabbit. So today we are celebrating with Seattle's premier lion dance troupe, Mach 5 Kung Fu Dragon and Lion Dance Association. And we're actually going to get a very special performance from them soon. But first, we're going to get to learn a little bit more about the association, and we are joined today by Chief Instructor Royal Tan and Student Instructor Han Eckelberg. Hello, guys. How you doing? Doing good. Doing all right. Happy We're New so Year. excited to have you here. Thank yes, you. Happy Thank New you. Year. And Royal and Han, uh, tell us about how Makfi started. So Makfi started uh, actually by my Sifu, which is uh, Master Makfi. Uh, he founded the group in 1974. So he started over in Hawaii, moved over from Hong Kong to Hawaii, and then 
we eventually moved its way up to Seattle, and then that's when we started the Kung Fu class, the Kung Fu school over here, and then been teaching lion dance and Kung Fu in the Seattle area for 49 years now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Next year we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary. Wonderful. That's incredible. Yeah. I bet you have some big things planned for that too. Yep. Once this Lunar works. New Year's out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Han, tell us a little bit about the style of Kung Fu that you teach. So the style of Kung Fu we teach is Choi Li Foot. It's a Southern style martial arts. Focuses on a lot of uh, dynamic sweeping and advanced footwork. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And what kind of classes are offered with, what kind of classes do you teach? So the classes we teach, we offer um, to kids around ages 6 to 14 years old uh, in combination with a lot of adults. So you have a lot of generations in the same place learning together. Uh -huh. And start, can you start as a beginner or do you already have to have some skills going into this? Is it all levels? All levels. Um, of course, like you can't always have the same like previous experience coming yeah. into it. But yeah, we we're trained in like teaching everyone. So if awesome. anyone's interested, we got you. Cool. That is so fun. And Royal the Lion Dance Troupe actually has hundreds of performances every year and you are nationally recognized. So talk to me about some moments that really stand out in your mind. Uh, so we are actually part of the United States Dragon and Lion Dance Sports Association. Uh, each year they have a national lion dance competition that we take place in and um, just troops from all around the U.S. that are either they're a part of the association or, or not and they could just all compete against each other and you know main part main most important part of it is to spread the art of lion dance you know let more people be aware of it and as well as just meet new people that sounds awesome and Han I know there's a lot of different generations of students within the organization like you guys mentioned a little bit yeah. what does that mean to you to kind of get to continue to learn from Royal and then you know continue to teach the next generation too um, I would say I'm like greatly inspired by Sifu Royal He's a great man and great leader. And to have all the generations in the same place, um, you just get an overwhelming sense of pride. Yeah. Especially during Lunar New Year's, there's just, uh, it can be quite stressful yeah. going across Washington, but we always make it happen and we really bring the tradition to life. So, yeah. yeah. And when you say he's a great leader, what are some of his qualities? Oh, uh, uh, Royal's qualities? We uh, want to hear it. Yeah, okay. we all of them. Just gosh. All of them. Uh, well, for one, just being, uh, I don't know, very observant. Uh, he knows what people are good at and he wants to utilize their skills the best way they can. Um, like for myself, I had like a passion in graphic design, so he allowed me a chance to do a lot of the posters Aww. and some other like t-shirts and stuff like that. And he really gets to know people pretty well, gets to know what skills are pretty good at. And if there's an opportunity to grow, then give you that chance and yeah, step into that leadership role. That does well. sound like a great leader. Yeah. <laughs> we actually even, uh, in 2020 of summer, we actually started a street, uh, Chinatown inspired streetwear brand. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, that so is lot, very uh, fun. Involving Chinatown and lion dancing. That's so cool. How yeah, can people find that? Uh, it's called Perseverance, uh, P R S V R N C dot clothing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. So I would love to know a little bit more about what it means to both of you that you're able to keep this cultural connection because I know how important culture is and art is in this community. What does it mean to you that you can keep that connection and you can help other young people keep that connection? Um, it's just pretty much building a strong community, um, especially in the Chinese community. Everyone is pretty much know each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's good that you know we are able to pass this art down generation after generation because if you know nowadays it can get died out pretty easily, but it's up to us to, you know, keep it going. Mm -hmm. And what has it meant for you, Han, to be able to maintain that connection? Um, well, for myself, um, I'm actually half Chinese, half German. Um, and to have that connection, especially uh, for my Chinese side, uh, really, yeah, I think, I think a lot of kids nowadays, it's really cool to be part of like a lion dance troupe or some cultural groups um, because you just get to rally with your community. And yeah, for us and for me especially, like just there's so much fun with that. What have been some of the best reactions you've heard from students that have taken your classes? Like, has, has there ever been someone who was super surprised by what they could do, or I don't know, any ways that's maybe like changed their life or their even just their week to week experience? You know, one thing that actually surprised me is some kids come in with like previous line dance experience wow. just based off of watching like videos on YouTube. Really? Yeah, and they can come in and as soon as they see a line, they just can't get their hands off. It's like they know exactly what beat to hit for what specific move and yeah, um, 
I don't know, it's just, it's just so cute seeing like the kids just kind of enjoying themselves <laughs> and growing along with the process, so. Yeah, I get a little head that. start on the internet. Yeah, yeah as you do. Yeah. Hey, Royal, I hear that there are different types of dragons, so talk to me a little bit about uh, what we're expecting to see this year. All right, so for um, the lion dance, the traditionally there's three colors, mm -hmm. uh, black, black and red, and white with a rainbow tail, but nowadays, Lioness has evolved so much that we can just pretty much use any type of theme. So this year we got the Seattle Sonics theme. Oh, uh, this is actually my second Sonics theme lion, so we call it the Sonics 2.0. <laughs> and cool. we uh, just debuted it yesterday at the casino performance. So it has to go through a whole eye dotting ceremony to give the lion life. And Very then here cool. we have it, brought it out today to perform for you guys. Amazing. Oh, we are so excited we to can't see wait it. for that. <laughs> Royal and Han, thank you both so much. Um, and you should definitely stick around because we're gonna get to see a performance by the Mach Fi Lion Dance Troupe coming up. Very exciting. Thank you guys. It was so beautiful to talk to you and we cannot wait to see more. Thank you. Thank All you. right, still ahead, we are giving you a look at a unique workout activity that'll get you swinging from the ceiling. <laughs> yep, I am taking you to Flight Room in Ballard. We're gonna do some aerial yoga. Stick around. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Hello, hello. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes I need a little bit of inspiration when it comes to staying excited about my workout. Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, I actually tried something that turned my workout routine upside down, literally. Sometimes you just want to switch up your fitness routine, and today we are hanging out at Flight Room in Ballard, and we're giving acrobatic yoga a shot. <laughs> Thanks hey. for having us in your beautiful studio. We are so excited to have you. We can't wait to jump right in. I'm so excited to learn this. How difficult is aerial yoga? That is an amazing question. And uh, one of the great things is we have classes for all ranges of experience and abilities, fitness levels. So what are some of the benefits of aerial yoga? So much of us, right, spend time like hunched over yes. at our computers. We can press the spine a lot. So just the opportunity to lengthen out, hang out upside down has amazing benefits uh, for the spine. Um, in fact, there's actually been some studies that people who regularly do aerial yoga can grow like an inch or two in height. Okay, okay. Yeah, pretty well, amazing. After one day or? No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> one day come in, well, you're gonna I'd be, be like 5'11 tomorrow. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ready Absolutely. for the runway. <laughs> <laughs> um, what tips do you have for me? Um, we always tell beginners just to listen to your body, take things nice and slowly. Cool, and then what about equipment? What do I need to bring if I come to a class like this? Um, the only thing we ask is that you bring water to keep yourself nice and hydrated. That's really important, so arriving hydrated is great as well. What are some of the different types of classes that you have here? We're really excited to be able to offer over 15 different types of classes, which is really unusual for an aerial yoga studio. Yeah. So not only do we have kind of your traditional aerial yoga class, but we have a couple different fitness formats where we incorporate um, weights and Pilates balls, resistance bands for fitness. What are you gonna teach me today? We are gonna do kind of a little um, mini flow class. So what's the first thing we need to do? So the first thing we need to do is make sure that your fabric is set up for your correct height. So what I'll have you do is come behind it like I am here. Come up on your tippy toes, press it down as hard as you can. And what we're looking for is it to hit you just at about the hip. So that's a little bit high. So I'm gonna pull you down just a tiny bit. We're holding on. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So then take this arm, continue holding on with that okay. arm. Take this one, bring it back through. So kind of where you started. Way. Reach up overhead, you've got okay. it. Extend your legs long. Once Woo! it comes down to the mat. Oh, oh you're, sorry. you're doing a much you more okay. Woo! advanced dismount than I was gonna have you. Yes! You did it! Oh my god, so good. You guys, that is that's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I look like I was struggling or if it looks graceful until I see the point of that, I won't know. That is a workout. Absolutely. Whoa, okay. I, just, I didn't know you could be feel so sore right <laughs> This All of this, I can see how it would get stronger the more Absolutely. you do it. Because right now I don't think I have that strength. <laughs> Aerial yoga doesn't let you cheat. It definitely activates those muscles you didn't even know you had for yeah. sure. Okay, now that I learned the basics, I want to learn the trick. So we're here with Catherine, your teacher here. What are you going to teach me today? I'm going to teach you some of our prerequisites for our intro to play class. 
Um, we're gonna be working on our goddess pose today. <laughs> You demonstrated, I didn't think I would be able to do it, but you explained it really well, so thank you. <sighs> <I'm out of breath. laughs> My body was sore in places. I did not even know muscles existed after trying aerial yoga. It was really fun though. Um, if you wanna check out a class at Flight Room, head to fox13seattle.com and just click on Studio 13 links. So you're saying that I could grow? Yeah, an inch apparently. I don't know how many that's, classes you need to do to grow, but that's we'll all take you need it. to tell me. Yeah. But would no you kidding. do it again? I would definitely do it again. They were so nice there too, and they do so many different types of classes, as you heard in that package. So great group of uh, instructors there too. I would definitely do it again. Would you? I, I would try it definitely, yeah. but I don't think I would want the cameras <laughs> there for my Honestly, first class. Honestly, wearing a spandex in a, for a video was the hardest part of the whole thing. I will be honest, <laughs> but it was. It was so fun. fun. Yeah, it looks so fun. <laughs> and I think it's always so important to find something that keeps you excited when you're yes. trying to work out because if you get bored, there's more of a chance that you'll like drop off. Yes, it's nice to trick your brain into thinking you're not working out. You're just playing and that's kind of what it was all about. I love to see it. I love to see your adventures. You're showing <laughs> us around. It's so fun. Thanks. All right, coming up, we are celebrating Lunar New Year with a special performance right here in the studio. Yeah, you can see Mach by Lion Dance tr Troupe perform with their new Sonics-themed lion. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I am joined again by Royal Tan with the MacBuy Kung Fu and Lion Dance Troupe. And we did get to hear about the association a little earlier today. And I have to tell you, I am so excited for what's coming next because you're actually our very first performance in the studio. So we are so excited to have you. But tell us what we're going to be seeing today in the performance and what it means. So you're going to be seeing the Lion Dance. The Lion Dance is going to be um, performing just a simple performance to present a scroll just to wish everyone a happy and prosperous year the rabbit. Beautiful. I love it. All right, let's turn it over now. So exciting to Seattle's premier Lion Dance troupe, MacFi. Goodness, this is fantastic. Guys, fabulous. Thank you so much for joining us. And everybody can catch the MacFi Dance Troops performance at the Lunar New Year celebration in Seattle's Chinatown International District on February 4th. We have all that information for you set up on our website. Of course, that's fox13seattle.com. Just click on Studio 13. And still to come, if you have a burning desire to own a mansion in a trendy suburb of Nashville, this Zilla home might be uh, just for you, giving it away there a little bit. This listing is on fire, y'all. And we will tell you how much of this home engulfed in flames is listed for and why the owners are selling it as it is. I 
Hello, hello. Welcome back. We are just so excited to be hanging out with everybody today. Yeah, we are. This is a good Monday. It's been a very energetic Monday so far. I loved that performance. Oh my gosh, it was like a party. That was, it was so, so good. cool. And our first <laughs> One in studio. Yeah, our first live performance. Hopefully the first of many, many to come. I love it. Too. Right. Well, it is time for Zillow Gone Wild, where we take a look at some of the wackiest home listings online. And this next one is one hat listing. Oh, yeah. So this house is in Franklin, Tennessee, and the couple's home recently caught fire, as you can see there. And instead of trying to rebuild, the owners are selling the home, quote, as is. It is selling for nearly $1.5 million. It still looks pretty opulent. Yeah, it looks like it had a great time at some point. <laughs> and, you know? Yeah. Well, it actually sits on roughly five acres of land and includes two other homes, Okay, one of which was not touched by the fire, but the steel everyone is talking about is that the home's foundation, which the sellers say wasn't actually burned, so that the house fire did not impact the foundation of the home. Got it, okay, so the couple says that they included the photos because they just wanna be transparent about the history of the home. You know what, fair enough, but I bet they also wanted to go viral because my goodness. <laughs> Uh, so the listing doesn't say how many bedrooms or bathrooms there are, but presumably that is because you, you're going to have to rebuild. Uh, yeah, <laughs> how many there are left. Yeah. <laughs> so would you buy something like this? Uh, I mean, for th it sounds like there's three houses on the property for mm -hmm. $1.5 million. Maybe. I also didn't know foundations were so valuable. Yeah, I learned a little something there, too. I didn't know that. But, I mean, yeah, if you've got other homes and you got the money to renovate, potentially a good deal. Yeah. But I can certainly understand not wanting to be a part of a construction site, so you're just like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. My sister, actually, they went to add on to their house, and it was, and they knew this when they bought it, but there was no foundation that their house what? was built on because it was a decades old house oh. and apparently a lot of homes in this area of Colorado mm -hmm. um, don't have foundations so they had the the fun experience of having to lift up their house have a new foundation poured and then be adding it on because to add on to your house there's a certain amount of code that has to happen including having a foundation for everything to stick to wow so um yeah that is a wild story yeah try not to buy a house without a foundation right <laughs> Maybe just a hot tip yeah, there. Yeah, maybe. You know, and I mostly have rented most of my Same, life. Yeah. And I really found myself in a tricky situation because I, when I lived in Colorado myself, mm -hmm. I went to a house, a rental home that was like perfect spot. I looked around and I was so excited. The rent was good. So I like signed everything. And then the day we were moving in there, my husband looked at me and said, there's no fridge. There was no, uh, I like rented a house without a refrigerator in it. Uh, it also did not have a dishwasher, which I had noticed. Yeah. But like then I was having to buy a fridge at the drop uh, of a hat. So definitely know what you're buying, yeah. what you're renting, pay attention y'all. Yeah, <laughs> I, so I lived in Los Angeles before this and about 50% of um, rentals there don't have refrigerators. Oh. It's a thing, the, landlord, the landlords don't want to take care of maintaining the refrigerators, it mm. costs you know, extra if something happens to your fridge. So I found the perfect apartment that I lived in before I moved here and it didn't have a refrigerator and I was so bummed about it. I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm renting this place. Why do I own a refrigerator and not the actual property yeah. that it belongs in? And if I move out, what am I gonna do? So I, I spent so much time researching refrigerators. I have this whole document where I've t sent to my friends who are actually <laughs> building homes that they're gonna live in forever. I'm like, I know everything you need to know about buying a refrigerator, Carly. what brands are good. <laughs> Here's a hot tip. The model of the refrigerator is what's more important than the actual brand itself because some of the models are better than others. Look at me dropping refrigerator knowledge right you here. You are a refrigerator expert and yeah. host. Oh my goodness. You it know what? Wild. I just bought the cheapest fridge there yeah, was. Yeah, smart move. So I had decided to get like a mid-level fridge. It was about $1,000. I placed the order with Lowe's. I was gonna pick it up. Uh -huh. And then as we were moving into this unit because about, I think there were 20 something units there, no one had refrigerators. People um, were getting rid of their refrigerator. So there was one that was just placed out on the street the day we were moving in. And I said, and I was talking to them, I said, does it work? And they said, yeah, we were trying to sell it. Nobody wanted to buy it. So just take it if you want. So we were the luckiest people ever. We just rolled the refrigerator wow. in and um, got to cancel the order from the one that I placed. Yeah. Didn't plan on talking a lot about refrigerators, but here we here are. Here we are it today. today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about something else. 
Another battle of the generations is brewing because apparently Gen Z is trying to do away with email forever. The CEO of IT Farm WePro says that 10% of his workers don't check their email ever. So instead, the CEO uses things like LinkedIn, Instagram to communicate with his staff. And the CEO went on to say, they're 25, they don't care, they don't even go on their <laughs> emails, they go on Snapchat. All right. Okay, but if it's your job, you probably should check your email, right? I think so. I will, a little hot inside goss for you guys, but even in work emails, you get a lot of like spam requests yeah. mm -hmm. or things that you're just not interested in. So it does get overwhelming. Like when I was off for a couple of days, I literally had like a thousand emails mm. and it's so stressful. So, you know, I can see why this is a way that things might go, just more direct communication. But I don't think we can just fully get rid of email. No, and also that really blurs the work-life balance yeah. line. If you have to yeah. check your Instagram to get a message from your boss, then you've got to have a whole other Instagram for that. It's just, just check your email. That's yeah. fine. I like the work-life balance as yeah. best as we can do. Yeah. Just check the dang email. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dozens of dogs got all dressed up to parade through Florida's Key West this weekend. And it was the annual Wiener Palooza <laughs> Dachshund Parade. While the parade is centered around dachshunds, of course, oh cute gosh. little wiener dogs. Uh, dogs of all shapes and <laughs> sizes actually joined in on the fun to raise some money for Lucy's Fun, which helps animals in need, a lovely charity. The dogs walk the streets while dressed up uh, from anything like a hot dog to mermaids Aww. and even royalty. Oh my, and look at that, elf on a shelf, but on a dog. <laughs> I love it, this is so cute. That's adorable. Is there anything cuter than a dog in a costume? Do you ever dress I think waffles not. up? We did, yeah, we actually participated. It was the largest um, Halloween dog parade in the country down in Long Beach. And um, my partner and my dog and I all dressed up as dinosaurs. So we Aww. got like dinosaur onesies, our dog dressed up as a dinosaur. It was so much fun. Very cute. Have you ever dressed up um, any of your pets? No, Mila and Magnus uh, just are not about that. They are larger dogs though, so it's harder to convince them to dress up, but I'll mm -hmm. do the little kerchief sometimes. Mm -hmm. But this last Halloween was ridiculous because my son Logan didn't want to dress up. Oh. The dogs didn't want to dress up. So it was just mom with her face painted like a scarecrow trying to like <laughs> amp up Halloween. And nobody wanted to get in on the fun. Oh, come <laughs> on. I'll dress up with you. Good. We can plan for that next time. Oh my God. So, of course, the Super Bowl is coming up pretty soon, or as we call it, Rihanna's concert. Yeah, the concert yeah. with some football around it. <laughs> so the Super Bowl is coming up February 12th, right here on Fox 13. Yeah, and what people eat on game day might actually depend on where they live. So get this, you might think wings are at the top of the list, and they are in five different states, but some of the more unusual picks in Delaware, crab balls are the most popular Super oh. Bowl food. I don't think I've ever had a crab ball. Oh. Um, and here in Washington State, it's hummus. Hummus. I'm. I love uh, some hummus. I'm just a little surprised. I'm. I actually am not that surprised. Uh, oh yeah, that guacamole is looking good too. That mm. would be my go-to if I had it. But I feel like hummus is just the go-to to bring if you go to if you go to a Super Bowl party. Yeah. So maybe that's why. Just is it because you're vegetarian? No, I, don't I know. would it's never like think to bring snack. some hummus. Really? No, I'd rather bring guacamole. But maybe it's oh, yeah. because you know I'm Hispanic and mm -hmm. it's guacamole and nachos. That's my go-to mm -hmm. for football. I love mm -hmm. it. Oh, there's guacamole. I'm just standing by that guac the whole day. <laughs> All right, still ahead, we are cooking up some authentic Indian food with Spice Wala. Yeah, we're going to show you how you can make this delicious street food at home. Get excited. It's happening all around, like sun shining through the clouds. I'm going to make, I'm going to make. It is time for Emerald Eats, where we highlight some delicious restaurants in our area. Yes, and today we are joined by Akanksha Sinha and Uta Mukherjee with Spice Walla. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank, Thank you, you for having, having us. us. Yeah, so you're all about Indian street food, right? Yes. Yeah. That's exciting. And where are your locations? We are located uh, in Capitol Hill on 15th Avenue and then in Ballard also. So I love this part of the story, but you guys started in 2018 and you are a husband and wife duo. What's yes. it like working together? <laughs> and <laughs> 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 
we've learned over the years. Yeah. What are each of your strengths? Yeah. I'll ask you that. Uh, yeah. we, we actually have learned to work in very different parts of the restaurant, so yeah. we're not in each other's space mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. Uh, you have fresh things to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So he has more of a business background, mm -hmm. and then I have a social impact and a social work background. Oh, okay, So cool. that's how we bring both of the things together, and both of us love food, so that's where we fight most of the time. <laughs> I know, I know. But it sounds like you guys have figured it out, which is really great, because it, it, it can be tough for husband and wife to work together, or for partners to work together. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love this aspect as well. Everything in your restaurant is $10 or less, is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Talk to me yeah. about the decision for that. So street food in India is a great equalizer. Like you can go to any street vendor on and get an item which is really inexpensive, but mm -hmm. you're all getting the same quality at the same price point. And so with Akanksha's social work, uh, social justice background, we wanted to bring that aspect into this restaurant also of just making sure that we were providing high quality food at a very affordable price in a city that's getting more and more expensive. I love that. Yeah, it can be hard to find good like budget eats. Yes. Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna have to pay you a visit. Um, what are we making today? So we are making an aloo tikki chaat today. It's one of the most iconic um, Indian street foods. Okay. And it's one of the most popular items in our restaurant. So that's what we're fo focusing on today. Amazing. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So walk us through yeah. what is in the dish and how it works. Sounds good. So we have a boiled potato pad, uh, potato over here that oh. we're going to mash. Um, just get in there, mash it really well. If you're mad I've never at someone, squeezed a potato like someone. that, but that looks very <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> so if you're into kickboxing or anything, just, just put all your pressure potato. on yeah. there. Yeah. And then once it's completely mashed, then we add a few spices. So that's our in-house spice mix. It has... Um, coriander, cumin, um, red chili powder, and a bunch of other spices. So mm -hmm. it'll be slightly sweet, tangy, um, slightly spicy as well. Mm -hmm. um, to add some freshness, we have cilantro, so mm, chopped yum. fresh cilantro, and then some fresh peas as well. Oh so you gosh. give that all a really good mix. Sorry, it's gonna be a little messy. That's okay. No, we I like it. It gets a little messy while we're cooking. Whether That's I'm right, cooking yeah. or eating, it's always a mess it's afterwards. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. yeah, people love this. Whenever they come into the restaurant, we weren't very sure of how people do love the food, but yeah. they ate the potato patty, the alu tikki chat, and like, yep, we want this again and again. Yeah. So it's definitely one of the popular items. I feel like when people cook, yeah. they think they have to have a gadget, but like yeah. your hands can work just yes. as well as yep. like mm -hmm. any sort of masher or I don't even know what the professional item yeah. is called. But I like masher. I like masher. <laughs> Your hand's a masher. So while we're working on this, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about the social impact you have made? I know that you did a lot of work during the pandemic yeah. and gave away a lot of free foods. Talk to me about that. Yeah, of course. So we started our community kitchen program is called Bhojan, which essentially means meal or feast. So we started this during the pandemic. So 2019, when COVID happened, um, we were trying to decide what do we do for our community. And we spoke to a bunch of nonprofits around Seattle and then decided to start our community kitchen program. So we serve 200 meals every week. Wow. Um, they're all vegan meals out of our um, kitchen in Capitol Hill. So both Uttam and I go in and cook. Um, and these are all vegan and vegetarian meals that we cook. Again, make sure that they're nutritious. We partner with Mary's Place at Capitol Hill and then Community Lunch at Capitol Hill as well. Um, and we provide groceries, another 100 groceries, to Asian Counseling wow, Referral that's Services. Um, till date, we've had 30,000 meals, um, and there's no level of stopping because the community needs it um, yet, so we're still going. What does it feel like to know that you're providing that many meals to people who need it? I mean, I feel like it's our responsibility, right? I mean, we feel good about it because we're doing something for the community, but there's so many people that are impacted by food insecurity and hunger. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, we're doing what we can um, for the community. Yeah. yeah. So what I love as we're listening to what you're yeah. saying and watching your husband cook is how yeah. simple it looks. So talk to me about the importance of making sure it's delicious, but also simple and accessible to people. Yeah. So chaat or Indian street food in general, like Uttam was talking about earlier, is mostly things that are the greatest equalizers. So it's inexpensive, but when you go to India, you'll have things that are made of very fresh ingredients. So we want to make sure that we are being authentic to the flavors of our country, and mm -hmm. we're bringing forward something that's complex, that is very intricate, but still very healthy and very simple. Can we try it? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah, how do we dress this up? Okay, so... Um, this is the alu tikki chaat, like I said. So it's put, uh, there's a variety of toppings on it. So we start with a sweet yogurt. 
seed drizzle. Mm. I like extra sweet yogurt. Utham likes a little Let's less. Do Let's do so it. I'm gonna it go looks like a donut. I love it. it. <laughs> yeah. Savory donut. A savory yeah. donut. That is your sweet yogurt on it, and then this is our in-house tamarind chutney. So it's a little bit sweet, little tangy. So just give it a good amount of it on top of it. All right, we do have about 45 seconds yeah. left, so if we could dig in, yeah. we would love that. I'll go the quick route. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we were just so, so excited to is, hear of all yeah. your good works. Yeah. yeah. Cilantro, some pomegranate over there, and then you have some this chickpea <gasps> shavings. So oh, so beautiful. Let's give it a try. Let's take a bite. <gasps> Potato anything I love. Yeah, <laughs> um, we'll love it. So, especially with all this yummy stuff. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yum. And I love the extra. That is so, <laughs> so good. Beautiful. Okay, one more time. Where can people find you? We are in Capitol Hill on 15th Avenue and in Ballard. Amazing. Oh, thank thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> having you all today, too. It's happening all around, like sunshine and through the clouds. I'm going to make